Hello and welcome. This is Universal Heritage Television Niger. We are happy to have you again. Our guest today is a seasoned broadcast journalist. His name is Zanders Otiba Okeke. He's going to share his experience in the world of broadcast industry and take us through some of the issues happening in the media industry. Zanders, you are welcome. Thank you very much and um, happy um, day and happy new month, listeners. My name is Afam Echi. Please remember to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Zanders, you remember uh, it was uh, BAT, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, that uh, increased the, I think there was an addition to our slogan. He said, Emilio come. You know, you're already laughing as if you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> that is, <laughs> so this is, it's not alone in that philosophy of uh, this is my turn. Mm -hmm. So this is my turn to do to you what you have been doing to people. You drag them to your studio and you begin to drain them with questions. So I hope you are ready for me. Yes, of course, I'm ready. It's okay. So please, can you start by telling us who you are, your name, introduce yourself. All right, my name is Zander Zukeke Uti. I'm a broadcast journalist. Um, I have been in this industry for quite some time. Um, I think about um, 18, 18, 19 years, if I'm not mistaken. I started with um, TSM TV. Um, it was as a reporter researcher. Then from there, I, end, I ventured into radio as a presenter. From presenting, I was, you know, seconded into the news room where I rose to become head of news. Yes, I was also head of programs. I'm, in between my head of news days, I was um, kind of shifted to the marketing department to head the marketing department. Then after a while, I came back to the news department as, and continues as head of news. And right after that, um, I was... Um, Nada decided to leave Abuja, that's the Federal Capital Territory, and decided to move down to Imo State as um, station manager for um, Darling FM. And then uh, from Darling FM, I decided to move again to Toast FM as the general manager. So that's been uh, my um, sojourn in the industry. And within all of this period, I have um, covered elections, I've interviewed, um, cream de la cream of uh, personalities, heads of government in various states. Um, for example, the president of um, Ghana, Akufo, um, Kufo, um, Jerry Rollins, um, not forgetting our own president here, president of Basonjo, uh, music maestro Fela Nikola Pokuti. I had a wonderful time with him, even though I became I, you know, on his. <laughs> <laughs> but be it as it may, it's been a wonderful. Um, Surgeon in the industry. I've won some couple of awards, uh, chief of which was um, I was among the 10 finalists in the CNN African Journalist Award, but I didn't make it to the finals. All right. And um, for BBC Media Action, I've won some bursary awards as well. And um, in the Nigerian um, media industry, I was reporter of the year for NUJ, the NUJ Awards in Abuja as reporter of the year, and some other awards that. Um, I can't really mention now. So it's been a tough, tall journey for me. So so you can see there is so much to celebrate about Zanders to Tiba. Okay, because Zanda, let me play with your name a little. Just give me one second. <laughs> you know, I told you this is my turn. <laughs> yes. uh, we, we've been interacting, but uh, I don't know. You know, in Igbo, they say there is always something in the name. Mm. When you answer the name Otiba, does it mean, are you a drummer in Otiba? Um, well, so, my 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 forebears, my great grandfather, yeah. um, was a drummer in a, in Anambra State. Then he he reigned between um, Abag and Omudioka and part of Ogidi, and that was where that name came from. You understand? And precisely when you come to my village, what they call my kindred is or my yeah, yeah. is um, the Okeke Otiwa Abatam family. Okay. You understand? And um, in my foray into the industry here, um, I used to use just my name, that's Zanders OKK. But um, let me tell you the story that brought about the Otiba, because some people see it as a nickname, but it's not. Um, my uncle was traveling from Onicha, passing through Oweri to Port Harcourt. 
and somehow he was in a vehicle listening to um, Darling FM and um, I was on the news and he was listening. At the end of the news, I just mentioned Zanders, okay, okay. Ah, that was when it startled him in the car and he said, ah, but he knows that his uh, nephew is in Abuja. Yeah. You understand? So when we, I think we now came home for one of the burials and he saw me and I said, yes, that's a... Um, he heard my name. Am I now in the way? And I said, yes. He said, ah, but nobody told him. I said, uncle, it was one of those things. You understand? Then he now said, please, I should do him a favor. Okay. You understand? That I should add Otiwa <laughs> to that name. Okay. That if he had heard the Otiwa, he would have said, ah, that's no. my nephew. You understand? Yeah. I played with it in my head for a while, but um, I didn't know whether to accept it. But somewhere along the line, what I just did is I, I came after the burial, I came, and the next news I took, I just went on and I mentioned the name. And before he knew it, instead of people to call me Zanders as they used to, it's Otiwa, Otiwa, Otiwa. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it is. Okay, okay. Chronically, your experience, one can say that you've grossed up over 20 years. Your journalism experience span over 20 years. And up, that, up precisely. Up precisely. There about, okay, yes. then about 20 years. Yes. And then, um, if you are not passionate about what you are doing, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have been there for this period. So, what is your motivation, you know, joining into uh, broadcast uh, uh, media of all the professions around? What, what, what uh, motivated you into that? Yeah, well, um, you know, initially I wanted to be a lawyer. That was my main drive. But um, I wrote jam twice. Um, I didn't get cut off for UNN the first time. I didn't get cut off for... Uh, and I got the cut off, that first one I got the cut off for UI, University of Ibadan. But he said I chose them as second choice, that we have to deal with those, I chose them as first choice. So the next job I did, and I decided to take UI as my first choice. Yeah. And um, apparently, <laughs> it was also an issue, I couldn't hit the cut off. And, you know, I found myself going into mass comm. You understand? And what I did, while in school, I was looking prints, broadcast print, but I, I knew my um, top was supposed to be the broadcast industry and that was what, what i majored in broadcast and um you know from school days i was on the radio there we had a radio then in, on campus that was about uh, 500 meters radios just covering that whole independence um lay outside in enugu okay, okay. you studied at enugu yes i i i schooled in enugu for tertiary institution and so um after that but towards the twilight of leaving school, I now notice that if you want to make money in this industry, advertising is the main, main place. You understand? So right after I left school, I was now trying, to, I said, practicing copywriting, you know, playing with words and all of that, seeing if I could get a job in the advertising industry. But um, it never saw the light of the day until um, TSN TV came. I applied. I was interviewed and um, I was given the job. Um, and that's just been it. From then on, it's been no going back. And for what has kept me in the industry, I think it's um, the fact that I like um, interviewing people, the fact that I like putting records straight, the fact that I like to go, you know, get the stories behind the story. You understand? You know, most times when people see the stories, they believe that ah, that's what it that's is, fun. but they don't know all the intrigues that, you know? And follow ups. Uh, yes, you know, so that's what it is. Okay, for, of all these periods, can you share your high and low moments? Have there been any periods um, you suffered some kind of uh, confrontation by the authorities because of the job you do? Um, not really, not really. Apart from maybe, um, you know, you know, as a journalist, uh, there's this issue when you're covering VIPs, especially those in government. You know, the security details too are, are there to protect this, the same person. You as a journalist, you're there to get information from the same person. I think on one or two occasions, I'll say I've gotten brushes, not deliberate, but in the bid to protect their principle, you understand? Mm -hmm. You know, they try to hit you or give you the elbow and all of that. And sometimes you wonder, I'm all for this job. <laughs> I remember there was a time um, before 2015 when, uh, when, I think that was, yeah, before the 2015 election, when there were speculations on whether Buhari was going to run or he was not going to run. 
and whether he was going to decamp, um, leave the C, is it CPC? Uh, you know, his initial, yeah, his, yes, you know, uh, or he was going to join the AC and all of that. So, at that, I was at that press briefing, and um, right after the press briefing, they didn't allow us to ask questions. So, as he was about entering his car, I recall that, you know, I'm, I'm also in, I'm, I'm on the big side. So, I looked at his security details. I just said, wait till I must ask these people this. I must ask my question. So, as he was just about going down, I just squeezed in. And lo and behold, my legs were not on the ground. Ah. Because they also, you know, they use their body to, uh -huh, in a bit to protect. But by then, I already stretched my hand. I said, Your Excellency, are you going to run in the next coming, uh, forthcoming election? You know, he was about entering his car. Yeah. He came out, and I was suspended, but with, <laughs> I had to get my story, you understand? And I said, Are you going to run? And he said, um, What do you think? I said, I don't know. He said, Well, he's going to run. Under which party? He said, just know that I am going to run. And he entered his vehicle and zoomed off. You understand? That's, um, for me, it was risky yeah. because it was until after I got that and those guys left me that I knew I was suspended. You understand? Yeah. From the ground. Yeah. You know? So, um, yeah, there are risks. But in all of it, we'll tell ourselves that um, you need to know where to, to, you need to protect yourself. Yeah. Because you protect yourself first before the story. Don't go try and become a hero. You understand? And because heroes don't, don't tell the story. Yeah. You understand? The real heroes don't tell the story. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about the experience. Well, that's every every profession has its hazards. Yeah. And that is what. Uh, that's what it is. For journalism. Now you you studied journalism. You have been into the practice for close to uh, um, two decades, and uh, one can say you've won awards. You've made the high and low. You know. One can say you, you've seen it all. Yes. Now, as a career path, what are you going to tell the younger ones who are aspiring to study communication? Um, especially, especially in an era where the youth are veering away from studies and taking to some mundane activities because of money. They, they, they see, there's no two ways about it. Um, the, the, the broadcast industry is an industry where it, 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 your, your work shows you don't see you, your skills. I, if you're a writer, probably a, you're, you're a print journalist, your writing shows. You understand? If, I, for example, I know people that, you know, when you see one or two paragraphs, you know how this is this person yeah. without even looking at their bylines. You understand? It's the same thing with the broadcast industry. You understand? They are, each and every one of us have our style, each and every one of us have uh, openings and our ends. And the important thing here is all about information management. You have to be abreast with almost everything, latest information under the sun, be it your field, be it a field you don't know. If you are talking about nanotechnology, you should know a little bit about it. If you are talking about um, uh, space or aeronautic um, engineering, you should know a little bit about it. You understand? So the journalist, or for this career, you need to be abreast with information. I, I tell you, I don't go to bed before 12. Because I need to catch up on on on, on news. Let us yes, let us development. I get some before I get home. I must listen to um, either I, I listen to channels, I listen to Arise, I listen to AIT. You know, by the time you go through all of this, you see the different angles they are coming from. At least as a professional, you will know where the meat of that story is, and you can now make um, informed yeah. decisions on all of that. So these are part of the things. There's no lazy man way. You understand? It's not you cannot tell somebody to do it for you, or somebody should write it for you to come and you come and uh, mm -hmm. say, mm -mm, you know. You need you, to have a, a good grasp. grasp of everything. You need to be hands on. Yeah. Information needs to. Be, you should be. You should read. I, I read voraciously. I, in fact, my library is uh, is is something that I can say is my most prized asset right now. Even though my wife does not understand it. Because sometimes she tell me that she wants to she wants to remove all these books from the shelf <laughs> and put something there. I say, if anything happened to any of that book, you, should, you understand. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it is, you know. Well, well uh, it is said that um, journalists like lawyers are people who are supposed to know too little of everything. Everything, yes. Because if you don't have an idea, you won't be able to report uh, at all properly. So, so you are you are on the right track. Now, let, let us uh, go to the practice. How would you relate? How would you rate? journalism practice in Nigeria, especially in Imo State, are they actually living up to their billings, speaking for the people? <laughs> uh, 
it's a dicey one here. Um, the truth is that um, in Nigeria, Nigeria journalists have, have, have sacrificed a lot for the unity and progress of this country in Nigeria. I mean, you, you remember the, the Dele Giwas, you remember the Ray Abels, you remember uh, quite a number of them, Penny Jassin. There's there are quite a number, yes, and quite a number of them are still on ground today, still trying, doing what they know how to do best. Um, but when you zero it down to Imo, in fact, I don't want to zero it down to Imo alone. In the Southeast, yeah. the Southeasterners have not um, imbibed the 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 profession as a career you understand business we, we see i mean south is boast of too many billionaires mm -hmm. you understand yes. but how come i don't know if have you asked how come the southwest is in control of the media be it radio television or newspaper it's not as if uh, they are, we don't have wealthy people here in, in, in the Southeast. But our people do not invest in the media on one hand. Our people do not believe in the media. You understand? You tell somebody, come advertise, come talk about your product. Come, um, let's put you out there. Let's package you. Yes. You understand? It's, it says, it's, it's as if you are talking to Totology. He will tell you that Imana and Abum Chief Okuko Ochaku Goma. You understand? He believes so much in his title. Yeah. You, you understand? You tell him, okay, come and advertise your goods. After the loan, yeah. You, you see, there are so many, but in the Southwest, mm -hmm. You you will see a canteen that, for example, a woman that sells Amala, mm -hmm. you understand? She will cut a radio presenter mm -hmm. to the point that she will even pay that. Okay, please make announcement that Mike Begley today is is okay. is uh, is top notch or mm -hmm. is out of this world. Mm -hmm. First time people might get this, aid. and before you know it, that joint will become the the landmark for that area. Mm -hmm. You understand? But we don't have that here. You see our enlightened people. Okay, you might let me even give you a, a typical scenario okay. to show you how how low the profession is in the southeast. Most of the southeast governors would rather invite journalists from Lagos. From Lagos yeah. You understand? There's this belief that uh, once it's in Lagos, it has gone around the world. You understand? But a small report from here can and also send the world. You, you get what I'm saying? So it's we need to change the mindset first. Yeah, then yeah. when we change that mindset, we will now see a situation where our journalists in the southeast, Kum Imo State, will now, you know, that profession will now get the gate it needs or it deserves. Now, what do you think is responsible for this attitude of our people? We try to excel in every other field. We are very, very correct. I observe I, what you've said is um uh, it's, it's a reality because you hardly can point to any, you know, just like what you have. Our people in the southeast that have sustained a newspaper in this area, mm -hmm. you know, that can rival, that can speak for the Igbo, uh, can, that can speak for our people. I, I think apart from maybe the Oji Zokalu Sun newspaper. But that is based in Lagos. It's based in Lagos, but at least it, it's owned by a southeastern person. Oh, he, well, he had a good. Mm -hmm. So, apart from that, then he also came up with the new telegraph, which I don't know how well it's doing, but at least it's there. Yes, that, but the truth is, if we do not imbibe, you know, doing business, you know, with our own, investing in our own, Akuluno, you understand? We come up with so many beautiful acronyms and uh, mm -hmm. uh, policies, but when it comes to implementing, and that's why it seems that the Southeast. Despite the amount of wealth, despite um, how other parts, regions of the country look at the Southeast, yeah, some of these little things that will help us in galvanizing ourselves for a greater tomorrow, yeah. where we, we leave them hanging. The media, for example, is supposed to be the watchdog. It's supposed to be the yardstick for which we measure our development as a people. Yeah. But are we doing enough? No. You understand? Okay, you look at our local tabloids, for example. I give it to them. They, they, for me, in Imo State, the local tabloids have done so well in creating an industry that has employed quite a number of people. If you go to Road to B, for example, it is a, it's a local tabloid that is making that place relevant. 
That's where they print. That's where they they get their materials for all of that. They they have some reporters on the field that go out to cover um, stories, even though they, they they do it at almost um, uh, uh, empty uh, stomach. Yeah, yes, yeah. you know the sacrifice is huge. It's, it's huge. You understand? But an industry has been created. <laughs> if if the if the government, you understand, is um, is awake to its responsibilities, kind of. You understand? Such an industry should be getting some subversion from government. You understand? Because it will go further in creating employment. Let me give you a scenario. Um, as at um, before 2015, Gus Will as governor of um, Akwaibom State, noticed that um, they had a local industry for tabloids yeah. in, in Akwaibom State in New York. Yeah. What did he do? And he noticed that they have also helped in creating some employment. Yeah. Because graduates of mass communications graduate yeah, every year. Yeah. And all of them cannot be, um, you know, employed by the few uh, big media houses. You understand? What did Akpabio do? Akpabio now came up with a policy that monthly, all of these local tabloids will get a subvention from government. As at that time, it was 300000 At least, if not to pay salaries, you can use it to buy newsprints. You can use it to, you know, um, print. Yeah. You understand? But monthly, yeah. something, comes, something to comes to them that sustains... Yeah. You understand? And before he left, that industry grew because quite a number of people now went to register their own um, tabloids and they started producing, thereby employing more people and creating jobs for the printers and all of that. You understand? It's it's a circle. You, you see? So government needs to be awake. The big people in the society, the elites in the society, need to realize that media is key. Tinubu's media, or Tinubu is enjoying media bliss. Because the Southwest owns the media and they feed us what they want to feed us. If not for social media, we, we might not have been seeing some of the gaffes of yeah, Tinubu on Tinubu. air. Yeah. You understand? If it were to be when the social media was not awake, all we'll be seeing is that Tinubu went here and promised this. Tinubu, you understand? But because, uh, and they, they are still packaging him. You understand? But which of our politicians from the Southeast extraction can get such coverage, positive coverage? From the media, yeah, it, it is lucky. Yeah, and if you're going to get it, you know what you're going to pay. Okay, yeah, uh, that's worth taking. What are your thoughts? What would you? How would you look at the current spike in the number of radio stations? Every uh, week? <laughs> you know, in some, in some, uh, in, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go ahead. In some profession, they say the more, the merrier. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't want to believe that's what's happening in the uh, broadcast medium. Uh, I think I, I knew when AIT started, mm -hmm. you understand, AIT was grossing so much monthly as at that time, even though it, with a, a more leaner um, fee, okay. I think monthly they were gulping over 25 million as um, revenue from advertise, advertisements and, um, you know, um, paid um, programs sponsors. and sponsorship yes. and all of that. But today, I don't think um, the industry is enjoying that much any longer. You understand? Um, for me, I recall that um, some two years ago, during one of the NBC's um, conferences in Lagos, I, I, I actually challenged the then DG of NBC, um, uh, Kau, um, Modibo Kau, that um, I don't understand why licenses are, be, are being issued to non-professionals on one hand then professionals are not getting licenses because i applied them okay. then secondly beyond that that the proliferation of licenses is becoming alarming you've given licenses to the police you've given to the federal safety corps you've given to the army you've given to customs you understand virtually you are giving to schools you understand most of the people that are supposed churches are not owning licenses as well people that are supposed to advertise on the radio station yeah. for the radio station to make money are now getting licenses and i don't know who we are all now going to this <laughs> you understand so we are all going to this i don't know who we're going to meet now to come advertise you understand and um surprisingly the the lady i can't remember her name now that was in charge of um, all of that you know replied because um what um, had to tell whoever was responsible for any of the questions to and she told me that my friend from Imo, that, um, well, I would like to bust your bubble. 
<laughs> that we are still going to give more licenses that we have not given enough licenses. Wow. And you see, the problem here is not about even giving licenses. The problem here is that a lot of licenses have been given that have not seen the light of the day. That's on one hand. And because of that number, some of us that genuinely want to go into the business of uh, radio broadcasting cannot. Because, um, you know, government tries to regulate, but it's regulation and not stiff. Because where they tell you they are regulating, you find out some new licenses come out and some people that are co well connected get these licenses. You understand? But it's, it's gradually killing the industry. It's gradually killing the industry. I mean, most of the radio stations these days cannot pay staff. Some of them cannot even pay their license renewal fees, which NBC knows. You understand? And no same businessman will go take money from another business and put it in another business. It doesn't make sense. If you set up a business, it's expected that that business after a while should run for itself, take care of itself, and also take care of you. So that's what's happening. Yeah, talking about manning this uh, radio station, the multiplicity, do we have enough manpower to take We care don't. Of? That's a major... That's and, and most of these owners are not investing in trainings. You know, I the first station I walked with was Hot FM. You understand? I recall before we started, a consultant from the United States of America, Ted Ferguson, was brought in to train us. He trained us for over a month before we went on air. And immediately we went on air, it was a ban. You understand? Then I moved um, to Darling FM. You understand? Yeah. Darling FM too, the owner also invested heavily on training. In fact, we had... We had um, um, a relationship with the BBC Media Action in, 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 in such a way that once in a while, quarterly or so, or twice yearly, they come to train us based on what they were, they were also trained and all of that. And you understand, it paid. You understand? So training and retraining is important. That's so that you can, you know, get abreast with latest technology on one hand. Then secondly, so that um, you have professionals manning the various services. Uh, but what you have these days is that uh, people just bring in anybody. So far you can speak English. And that's where you hear people come up and just say anything on radio. Uh, I recall that um, my grandma, the little, she could speak of good English. Yes. She said she learned on radio. You understand? Mm -hmm. By listening to radio, you understand? AM radio then, you know? That's where, mm -hmm. you know, in fact, that's where she learned her, her English language and it was um, impeccable. And uh, such opportunities we are missing these days. Yeah, we are missing. I mean, you hear so, in fact, you, you sometimes you hear presenters these days, they, they shift from the American accent of, of American style of English to, to, English. to the British English. Then later you even hear the Niger. The, the Niger version, and you understand. So it's more of a, every, anything goes. Confusion everywhere. There's confusion everywhere. Okay, let's hope uh, things will get better. Now uh, the the media industry, especially the broadcast industry, is one profession that experiences high job mobility. People move from one outfit to another. It, 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 it was the case sometime in the banking industry yeah. and um, you know people shift you know jobs move from jobs uh, in, in this case what could be the motivation because um, uh, why I ask this question is journalists claim they are poorly remunerated mm. they are poorly remunerated that's yeah, the cry but that's the fact that, that's the cry yet they do critical uh, jobs, jobs for the society so what could be the motivation in moving from one outfit to another um, you know, the truth be told, um, this profession is not pensionable. As if you're not work if you're not working in a government-owned um, setup, setup, you understand. That's one. And because of lack of basic manpower, anybody that wants to start a new station, mm -hmm. instead of probably training okay. his sets, you know, I've consulted for one or two radio stations, and to be candid, I, what I tell them is that. It's just your head of station that needs to be, you know, a pro. I prefer green horns, people you can mold, yes. you know, selling the vision of your station to. Because what normally happens is by the time you bring a professional from here, you bring, all of them will now come with their high horse toga. And before you know it, it will be acrimonious within the setting. I know you cannot tell me this. And I, I, I know this more than you, you know. And... It's, it shows the microphone has a way of telling people. You understand? That's the truth. 
So um, one is lack of basic manpower. Then secondly, you know, greener pastures. But like I, I say, the grass is not green on the other side. You know, people tend to think the grass is green on the other side. It's not. Um, then some owners too that are starting new radio stations, they promise you heaven and earth. They know you are receiving a hundred thousand in your present station. Mm -hmm. They come, they say they will give you one fifty. I mean, if you look at it, wow, one fifty. You just resign. You go to the new place. They pay you the one fifty the first month. Probably pay you the second month. And by the third month, the owner will say, "Are you are not making money?" Mm -hmm. You understand? And they, they start owing. You understand? Once they start owing you, you are now looking for the next place for survival. You can't go back to your to the previous place you were, you understand, you now start looking for, so you just see that merry-go-round in the system. But be it as it may, um, I think it has um, come to the point where uh, professionals need to think before jumping. Then professionals need to be in the system long enough to mentor the your upcoming ones, because that's one thing that's lacking in the industry. That's mentoring? Mentoring. Or, or you know, what is lacking is it mentoring or good hands to mentor? Uh, good hands to mentor is not because most of them either join politics or become consultants to some of these multinationals and they forget the industry. You understand? That's on one hand. Then the few ones that are around too, they don't even have time to mentor. And even the mentees are not willing to learn. So it's, it's a vicious circle. It's, uh, you understand? And that's why um, so many things are, are going wrong. You, you understand? Um, and that's why at every point these days, everybody tells you, uh, it, I was I was misquoted, that is not how we, I said it, you know? Um, I don't even understand what these radio people are doing any longer. You've heard so many things, you know? So it's, it's also affecting some of us that are professionals in the business. Okay, okay. Now, one of the issues journalists are grappling with is, um, the social media. So how do you think, how is social media, the encroachment, the inversion of social media, how is it affecting journalism practice? Yes, um, the thing is that uh, journalists, to, uh, it's, it's something we have to embrace. It has come to stay. You understand? Yeah. Because uh, the citizens that use social media to you know, disseminate some information or news, are not professionals. So they don't even, sometimes they don't even know that certain things that are, are sent out are not supposed to be sent out like that and all of that. You understand? Um, yes, for what, it, for what it's worth, I think the only place I think I, I will give them kudos is the fact that immediately it's happening, the person there sends it out and becomes viral. Yes. It now beholds on the professional to go in and, and you know do a proper investigation and come up with the authentic story. That is where we are becoming lazy as journalists. Some of us, what we do, once we see it on social media, we just take it, we listen to what the person has said, then we now want to use flowery language to report it as if we are there. Meanwhile, you are not there. You understand? And that's why most times you hear the issue of fake news. You understand? You are not there. And a rebuter could come in. If your editor calls you and says, yeah, somebody has given a rebuter, you start in the end. You know, but if you were there, if you had investigated, you say, no, I was there, I did not see this, or I saw this, and you understand. But So, journalists are becoming lazy. If it's social media, it has come to stay, we need to, you know, find a way to work with it. That's the truth. And I, I mean, if you look at the NUJ recent conference in, in is it in Cannes? Yeah. You understand? They removed NOE and one other group from the yeah. NUJ, and they are now welcoming uh, yeah. the online uh, yeah. journalists. Yeah, yeah. so... That's what it is. It, it's 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 something that we have to embrace. But in embracing it, we need to also be professionals. We need to be on top. Then there are some stories. If you are in doubt, leave it out. If you are in doubt, there are some stories that I see online. <laughs> I look at it. If I mean, if I don't see it in one or two other places or even uh, the mainstream. mainstream media, I just leave it out. I I feel it's for my personal consumption. If I want to laugh, I laugh over it. If I want to just keep it there, I keep it there, and you know, move on. Okay, you, you belong to one of the media groups, OAP, on air producers. And that's a, well, actually, is, I, I, that a, is that, a, I want to find out, is that a, a trade union or is it a professional group? It's what not. What actually do they do? 
it's it's not a professional group. We 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 started as a um, organization of radio and TV okay. presenters. Okay. Uh, um, LTP. Okay. Uh, I mean Association of Radio TV Presenters. But um, along the line, we went to CAC, you know, and now we've been put under the Trade Union Congress okay. as National Association of Radio TV Presenters of Nigeria. And it's it's started from Imo State. Um, they have we've been given the mandate to go round the south, east, mm -hmm. south, south to get about eight states inaugurated. I think um, Abia State will be inaugurated this month, month of February. Mm -hmm. I think whether February 11th or 20th, I can't really remember now. Then, you know, other states have been visited to planning their inauguration. That's that. It's basically for the welfare of uh, presenters. You know, welfare, training, whatever, you know, a trade union does. That's what um, it's there for, you understand? Um, we're, we're not um, looking at a situation where we have we become confrontational with government or the owners of the business. Mm. You know, basically, the way we started was to form a group that will cater for the needs and welfare of its uh, members. Then, of course, look at various ways to train and retrain ourselves for the dynamism of the profession. Yes, bring, uh, uh, injecting professionalism. Yes, into, into the, group. the group, yes. Okay, beyond the eight states, are you restricted to the eight states? No, 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 no. we're so, not. You know, when, when you're forming a union, it's a gradual thing, you understand? So by the time we get the eight states, uh, we can now, you know, move to Abuja, then start pushing for other state chapter formation. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Now, uh, talking about regulation, do you have any issue with the level of regulation presently in the industry? Yes. The standard? Yes, um, it's, it's becoming um, it's, it's becoming vicious. You understand? Um, before now, before the Buhari administration, um, the NBC, the Nigerian Broadcast um, Commission, you know, was seen more like a regulatory agency. You know, it was more, it had a friendlier face. Okay. You understand? Even its fines were being, um, I mean, within limits. Because let me tell you the truth. Huh? Most media organizations or media owners mm -hmm. do not pay these fines. It is you that incur the fine that will pay. That the staff? Yes. That's what it is. If you know, they don't have the capacity, what happens? Some of, I mean, we've seen instances where staff resign. You understand? So before now, it used to be 50,000, 70,000. Then the major ones, 100, 115, 150,000. Then the, the biggest there was 500,000. And that's during the political list where they say maybe you went out of your way to, to do something that is uh, anti professional. You understand? But when the Buhari administration came on board, <laughs> the minimum fine became 250. Wow. Then 500 was like the next one. And now it has gone up to 5 million. You recall the last time Arise TV had issues. Okay. Uh, they were built. Uh, yeah, it's it's okay, 5, million. 5 million. You understand? And that um, is killing. It's killing. It can shut down the station. I've just told you that some um, media practitioners have resigned because the fine came. The owners of the business said they, wouldn't, they can't pay it. That is the staff that incurred it that should pay. And the staff say, ah, where I want to see the money from? So the best bet was to resign. You understand? And um, right now, NBC is now even looking more like um, um, a, instead of a regulatory agency, it's now looking like a revenue generating, gener generating agency. You understand? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember in Abuja then, when there is any little breach or you go against some of the codes, yeah. you understand, you receive a call. And once we receive that call, it puts, you know, fear. Yeah. The next thing you see us do is that we have to dash down to the um, FCT office of the NBC. To find out. To, uh, and they will not say, ah, my friend, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Ah, no thanks. Ah, I didn't know, you know. Then they will not give you warning and tell you it shouldn't happen again. But today, it's no longer like that. You understand? Even a mere superlative that maybe an advert slogan, you say the best, uh, the best headache medicine in Nigeria. Yeah. Because you put that superlative best, you could get a fine. Wow. You understand? 
Meanwhile, before now, what they will tell you is that, ah, guy, there's a palliative in that uh, payoff line. Can you tell the audiences to remove it? You understand? And it's now, it's creating a kind of friction. And putting fears. Yes. And it's, it, it's, it's, uh, you know? it's, it's going to lower the creativity in people. It, now, some, some, some practitioners are already censoring themselves. Self-censorship. Because the, the, the fear of NBC is the beginning of wisdom. That's what it is. So you try to self censor yourself. You understand? I, I mean, um, well, I, I, I wish it would get um, lighter and they should, they should look more at becoming friends because we are all in, in this together. I, I don't think there's any station that wants to bring down Nigeria or wants to cause chaos. What it is is that we want development and that's what we're all in for. Okay, one more question, final question. Now, if you have all the powers, or if you are meant to be in charge of NBC, the regulatory organ, you know, or if you are the head of state and you have all the powers you need to bring effect some change, what is the immediate thing you need to do to bring positive change in the brokers so that they can create value for both mm -hmm. the, all the stakeholders? First and foremost, um, you know, Revenue for broadcast station is very is very important, yeah. and agencies, advert agencies, are not helping in this regard. They give you adverts to run. Mm -hmm. You run it. Maybe they give you uh, to run from January to January first to January thirtieth. You finish running it, then you send them the COT certificate of of uh, transmission to show that you run it according to the specification they gave you. Mm -hmm. eh? It will take another 90 days for them to process. Mm -hmm. Now we are looking, if you say January is gone, 90 days is going to be end of March. March. No, no, end of uh, April, April, April from, now. from now. Then your payment will be around May. You understand? Mm -hmm. That is that is That's killing. Cool. Yeah, we, 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 like I also recall that at, at a seminar, we are, an NBC seminar, Somebody raised that issue. Can NBC liaise with advertising agencies that this thing is killing the industry? But NBC told us that their powers are not... Uh, and then if your power... Can you probably get uh, ACON? The as okay. I say, uh, as advertising... It's now regulatory commission. Okay. You know, before it used to be advertising practitioners, uh, but now it's regulatory commission. Can you get ACON? to bring the agencies with NBC for a tripartite meeting, and these things resolve. If after I run an ad, and I get my payment at the end of a 30-day period, yeah. fine and good, you understand? Then um, we, some of the spare parts should be tax-free, so that we have, um, we're able to stay, because uh, the truth is, without the broadcast industry in Nigeria, um, I don't think we are doing anything, you understand? We entertain, we educate, and we inform people. Yeah. Government disseminate their policies, their businesses, their issues through most of these media organizations. So um, there's no point. If, if, if they can give us a tax-free regulation for most of the parts, spare parts for the industry, it will be a long way in ensuring that uh, the industry stays afloat and uh, people are still in business. Okay, Zandas, uh, it's been a nice time with you. Thanks so much for coming. Yeah, we we'll round up the program. Thanks for your contributions. Thank you very much, and um, I wish the Universal Heritage Television the very best in the year 2023. Thank you so much. Yes, here yeah, we round it off. Please remember to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channels, and stick around for another edition very shortly. Thank you so much. <laughs>